Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Uncle Matt's Cookery Lessons. If you fancy a corned beef sandwich and you've got about a week to spare, well then you watch this video because you're going to be able to make that thing. To something much more better, salt beef. Never done it before, this is very experimental for me. I have watched and I've seen some uh, different recipes and I believe I've got my brine right. So this brine is now cold, very important. The brine must be cold when you put your beef into it and it must not be in metal. So I've either, I'm either going to use this glass jar, which I'll, this glass bowl, which I'll prefer to, um, as long as I can have it completely submerged because it can't be touching the air, because this thing is going to be in the brine for a week, one week I've decided, before I'm going to clean it and then cook it. Um, if I can't do that, the biggest plastic container I found was this old salad spinner. But that should do the trick as well, shouldn't be any problem with that. Either one of those. Anyway, so I'm going to crack on with this now, and if you're watching this, you'll know that I have made some beautiful salt beef. Alright, let's make this brine full recipe in the description. In goes the cold water, that is some pink Himalayan salt, you can use sea salt, kosher salt, it's fine, I just happen to have it. That was some sugar, that is the potassium nitrate or saltpeter, that's the controversial thing. Make it nice and pink, some bay leaves, some peppercorns, some allspice, some cloves in there as well. What else? Some mustard seed, some coriander seeds, but those are pretty much just aromatics that I had. Oh, star anise, a bit broken up. You can put cinnamon in there, you know. The salting encourages those flavours to seep into the meat, apparently. Uh, so I just want to see if this tastes nice. Ugh. No, it tastes horrible. Right, so we've got to penetrate this thing. So this helps by getting a fork and just giving it a thorough stabbing all over, and it's now officially dead. Now, I wanted to use this glass bowl, but you'll see in a minute I decided, nah, it's not working. For one, I've not used all the brine, but I don't think that's necessary as long as it's fully submerged. So let's let's not be too proud. Let's change our mind here into this salad spinner, which I haven't used for years anyway. Why not use it for this? So cover it completely with the brine. If you leave it in a metal uh, container, it's gonna sort of it's gonna activate. It's gonna mix with the salt, and it's gonna make a chemical reaction, and it's gonna be bad. A little bit of cling film helps to get rid of the air that plate was too big get a smaller one and there you go that is now held fully under that liquid level and we're gonna each day we're gonna take it out of the fridge and turn it over so as you put it in your fridge watch out for the mobile phone why well, that's in there I don't know and there you go yeah in one week's time we'll have a lovely brined brisket so this is the turning it over process but obviously this is on the day I'm gonna cook it you can tell I've got the vegetables on the board but there you go that's what I did I turned it over covered it back and then popped that back in the fridge every day for a week now bring it back again get it out of the brine I had a little research can you use the brine again and it said no but I suppose you could always give it a try if you like but uh, I'm not recommending it and it's really firm now it's not soft and squidgy at all Mirepoix is required for the cooking of this in the stock, so stock vegetables, leeks, celery, onion, garlic, and some hardy herbs. Don't worry about taking the skin off the onion, it's not that necessary. There you go, that's done, easy. Right then, big pot, fresh water, in with the mirepoix, and your herbs. Pop the lid on it, but I just left it slightly askew, and that's about three hours later of very, very gentle simmering. Now let me try to explain a little bit of the science behind this. So it's called corned beef sometimes because the corn was like the large grains of salt resemble corn, hence corned beef. Right, that's that bit done. The nitrate, saltpeter, converts the natural myoglobin and it reduces, hang on, what does it do? It reduces botanium, which inhibits the growth of clostridium 
botulinum. There you go. But it also can increase the risk of getting cancer. But, you know, so does everything, doesn't it, nowadays? Right, so, string off. And I'm just carving off a little bit here because I want to make a sarnie with this thing. Oh, yeah, it's lovely. So you can see the pinkness. That has been achieved because of the nitrate. So whether you want it or not, if you don't put it in there, you'll just have a very tasty piece of grey meat. But, you know, there's no, no nothing else wrong with it. I just thought that looks nice. So I've toasted a bagel. I'm going to squeeze a load of French's like American style mustard. Don't get confused to put English mustard on in that quantity. It's going to blow your head off. It's very manly English mustard, of course. So, you know, several slices of that beautiful salt beef on there. Still nice and warm. Some sliced gherkins on there. Lashings more of the mustard. My mouth is watering again as I'm watching this because I can remember how beautiful this tasted. Let's cut that thing in half for the binging with Babiche fans because that is one hell of a cross section. And I'm just going to take a great big whacking bite of that thing and uh, yeah, what do you think? It tastes beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. So that's, that's corned beef. But I thought, well, let's show you one more thing you can do with it. And that is the very famous corned beef hash. Hash coming from the French word haché, which means chopped. So I'm just dicing up some of this. Obviously, it's cold. You can see it's cold. This is the day after. And I had it diced. I thought, no, let's chop it a bit more. And then I thought, oh, hang on, let's correct my board. It's a bit wobbly. So I rearranged my J-cloth underneath. Make sure that, that board is nice and secure. Be safe, folks, when you're chopping. There we go. That's a lot better. And I decided I'll leave some chunky bits and some small bits. And that's looking gorgeous. Now, I haven't shown you the whole part process I'm about to do, so I've already chopped up some onion and I've cooked some potato and cut those up and the potatoes are cold. That was a warm pan already, some lard, you could use a bit of oil, a bit of butter, you could use some beef dripping of course. So in goes the onions first of all, you can add some spices if you like, but I just kept this quite plain, just a bit of salt and pepper. Easy with the salt, obviously the salt beef, funnily enough, is a bit salty. You wouldn't imagine would you? In goes the spuds. And then a couple of minutes later, in goes the chopped corned beef. And of course it's me, so a bit of parsley. This is the technique. So you keep it over the heat, you sort of squash it down, you flatten it, and then you sort of turn the bits over to reveal a nice, nice, a nice crispy bit underneath. And just sort of keep doing that for a few minutes. Don't worry about looking, making this look all poncy and fancy. None of that rubbish. No, you get it looking all rustic like that, but it's gorgeous. Ah. Oh. And, of course, a poached egg. You can do a fried egg if you like. Top it with a little bit of pepper there and some more parsley because I can't help myself. And, yeah, food porn. I thought I'd leave you with that bit. Now, back over to me. Okay. So corned beef, I think it explores quite well there with a traditional uh, bagel and here uh, a day later when it's called down as corned beef hash with a poached egg. I think I'm going to like this. Mm. It's actually surprisingly reminding me of the tinned corned beef this way I think because it's broken down as it's got hot, you know, the fattiness in it. So perhaps I shouldn't be so harsh on the old reliable corned beef tin. You know, staple of my youth. Anyway, this is gorgeous. Yeah. So if you if you're into the you know slow food movement and you want to marinate or brine a piece of brisket for a week and then create something like this you'll feel the satisfaction of doing so. I think I do. I'm really enjoying this sort of cooking now. Anyway. Mmm. Yeah. Salt beef, corned beef, whatever you want to call it. It's gorgeous. Give it a try. And uh, let me know how you get on. See you then. Bye.